Kaido Kirishima believes that when you die, you travel to somebody's heart and stay, living on as memories. Even so, memories fade over time, and that's why people want to leave something behind. He is testing out his film on the bridge of a dam when a UFO crashes nearby. The impact was so great that Kaido was blown off the bridge and would have probably been killed if not for a gentle, soft hand that reached out for him. He woke up on the wrong side of his futon this morning. On his way to school, he spots a red-haired girl on the train. She is being starred at by other passengers as though she did something wrong. In class, Kaido discusses with his friends, Tetsuru Ishigaki, Mio Kitahara, and Kana Tanagawa, the kind of movie they're going to make for the summer holidays, and Kaido was supposed to scout for the location yesterday. Tetsuru suggests using Shai Mio as the main actress, and she doesn't even need a script to go with it. Kaido tests his camera, spots the red-haired girl outside the window, and is somewhat attracted to her. His friends tease him that she is his type of girl since he continues to record her. The redhead is Ikika Takatsuki, who is a new transfer student. The guys are crowding around her, but Lemon Yamano shoos them away by threatening she'll do amazing things to them if they don't. Ikika eats with Lemon, and she is somewhat nervous about the conversation. Tetsuru and Kaido observe from afar, and Tetsuru has all the information on her, from her three sizes down to her shoe size. The duo then go up to Ikika and ask her if she could help out in a movie they're making. She instantly agrees, and Lemon also wants to help out. It seems she has this friend of hers named Lucas that she wrote her script for, so she assures them they can leave the film's plot to her. Mio and Kana, not wanting to be left out, also decide to join in on the project. The friends see a mark on Kaido's neck and think it's a kiss mark. Kaido dismisses it as an insect bite he got from yesterday's outing when he suddenly remembers the UFO crash. Kaido is feeling happy over the developments when he sees Ikika fishing at a stream. He goes up to tell her there are no fish in this stream, much to her embarrassment. As they walk home together, Kaido fantasizes that Ikika will praise him for his keen observation that she transferred alone and her dilemma of having no place to stay. That's when he'll offer her to stay at his place and coach her acting if they live together. Kaido couldn't possibly bring Ikika home suddenly, seeing that he lives with his older sister, Nanami. Ikika doesn't want to be a burden on him and decides to search for a new place to live. Kaido changes his mind and lets her in anyway since his sister won't be back so soon. Kaido couldn't believe how Ikika dragged her heavy luggage all the way, so she gave the excuse that she was used to grabbing it. As Ikika takes a bath, Kaido suddenly feels pain in his neck. Then he collapses, unconscious. Ikika heard a loud thud and rushed out to see Kaido out cold. To her horror, scales are forming on his neck. She summons Rinan, a cute alien inside her luggage, and the luggage itself transforms into some high-tech equipment to heal Kaido. Then she kisses him. Nanami is coming back with Mio as they talk about the former's business trip to Bolivia, which will last about three months. Nanami thought her eyesight was getting worse when she saw a girl clad in a towel holding Kaido in her arms inside a bright circle of light. So, opening the door again, Nanami and Mio see a girl clad in a towel holding Kaido in her arms. Ikika is revealed to be an alien journeying to look for a certain scenery that she has been seeing in her imagination. She crashes and lands on Earth when her spacecraft hits space debris. Meanwhile, Nanami awakens, saying she has had a dream about Kaido being hugged by a naked girl in a ball of light. Nanami gets to know Ikika, and out of nervousness, the latter almost reveals that she is an alien, but manages to convince them that she is a foreign student. Listening to her story, Nanami lets her move in with them since she will be away for quite some time, and she was looking for someone to take care of Kaido. Kana was surprised to hear it, even thinking it to be some sort of wedding arrangement in exasperation. After seeing Nanami off the next day and right after shopping for clothes for Ikika, Kaido finds Ramon, Tetsuro, Mio, and Kana inside the house to talk about the movie project. After Ramon served them some sort of spiked alcoholic drink, which had bad effects on Kana, Kaido again fainted due to the same illness, but Ikika kissed it away. Kaido wakes up to the weirdest dream in his life. Ikika rejects his love because he is a bespectacled, fantasizing pervert. Because of that, Kaido leaves a note to Ikika that he'll be taking a day off and wants to be left alone. Ikika has Renan do a scan, but finds nothing wrong with his body. In class, Ikika shows the notes to Lemon, and the sneaky girl knows Ikika must have said something for this kind of development to occur. 
Tetsuru, Kana, and Mio don't remember much from yesterday's gathering when Tetsuru passes Kana a letter from Lemon. It's a picture of Kana in a sexy pose during the King game. Ikaka couldn't fathom Kaido's behavior and came to the conclusion that he may have discovered her identity as an alien and would call them the men in black. Meanwhile, Kaido further fantasizes that Ikaka revealed his failed confession to his friends, and they are all laughing about it. Tetsuru thought of visiting Kaido and worded it in a way that even made Kana rush off there first. Lemon pops up from nowhere and feels like this is their chance. Kaido is surprised to see Kana at his doorstep, and since he thought Ikika would be mad, he brought her in, so he decides to bring Kana out to town. Unknown to them, the busybodies led by Lemon are tailing and spying on them. As Ikika walks back, she sees Kaido and Kana on the passing train and believes they know her secret identity. She summons Rinon, but that little blob is dozing after enjoying a cup of noodles. In town, Kaido films Kana while they go about, and Lemon films them. Capturing the spark of youth that only lasts in an instant, Mio tugs at Tetsuru's sleeve so that they can go buy some drinks together. Mio tells him that if he's interfering with someone's love life, he'll end up getting hurt himself, and it was really painful. He assures her that he's just helping out and that Kana and him are just childhood friends. Kaido and Kana talk about why he skipped school, as does Ikika. The moment seemed right for Kana to confess, but was rudely interrupted by the wheezing sound of Lemon's rolling camera. Kana couldn't allow this invasion of privacy, but was distracted enough to allow Lemon to escape. She chases after her. Then, when she saw that Tetsuru and Mio were also around, she realized that she had been spied on the entire time. Kaido bumps into Ikika, but he runs away, but she chases him. Once she catches up to him, Ikika hopes he won't tell her and wants him to keep it a secret. He, too, agrees that he won't tell anyone since he got rejected. Then they realize they're talking about different subjects, but can't bring themselves to say what it is. So they grabbed some food, chatted aimlessly, and touched on any topic except yesterday's. He realized their relationship was just budding and felt a weight lift off his heart. While waiting at the train station as Kaido films Ikika as practice, she asks who it was that he rejected. She makes guesses that it's Kana or Mio, but when she cheekily mentions herself, Kaido freezes. He is shocked that Ikika just entered the train and left without a word while Kaido just stood there. Next morning, Ikika tries to act natural, but gets startled when Kaido speaks to her. She nearly dropped the knife on Happy Renan. In class, Kana and Mio apologize for yesterday, but they can feel something awkward going on with Kaido and Ikika. Even Lemon. See how she teases Ikika by mentioning Kaido's name each time. Kaido fantasizes about his ultimate reconciliation plan with Ikika, which ends with a hug, but he's hugging Tetsuru. He's here to deliver the bento Ikika made for him. Kaido seeks his advice and asks hypothetically about the love problems between A-chan and B-chan. His advice is not to lose his head. Apparently, Ikika also asks the same thing in the same way as Lemon. Since A-chan doesn't dislike B-chan, isn't it okay to go for it? Ikika isn't so sure that'll work out since A-chan will have to leave town soon. As Kana talks to Kaido, Lemon teases them about her voluptuous body in a swimsuit. Ikika sees them and quickly goes away. Kana advises Kaido that he needs to get a hold of himself and be there for Ikika since she's a foreigner and Tetsuru thinks Kana, as C-chan, the rival, is digging herself deeper and deeper. Kaido once again fantasizes aloud about the right plan to make up with Ikika. So much so, Manami Ogura, Tetsuru's sister, heard it and had him tag along with her shopping. Ikika also thinks of making up with Kaido when she sees Kaido and Manami together. All that worry turned into jealousy. She summons Renan, but the pet is ignoring her since it is happily rolling around with the green tea container. However, she warns that if it ignores her today, there's no telling what she'll do. Rinan appears before Ikika, and she's really mad as she squeezes the little alien while taking out her jealous frustrations. Follows them via teleportation with Rinan's help, even to Manami's apartment. Worried about what will happen next, Ikika enters and tries to take him home, though not without clashing a bit with Manami. Tetsuro arrives and clears things up, telling Ikika that Manami is already married and that she is here because of a petty quarrel with her husband. As an apology, Ikika asked Kaido if she could do anything for him. He asked if she could help him review for the finals, to which she agreed, and she helped him study until the final day of exams. 
Summer begins, and Kaido feels he won't survive this summer. Ikika learns about Kaido's video camera, which he found in the attic, and that belongs to his late grandfather. Their close proximity is interrupted when Lemon and the rest are here to start their filming. Lemon, as the director has written today's scenario in Hong Kong style, and our main heroine, Ikika, is in a tight catsuit. The encounter of the heroine, who is an alien, with an earthling boy. Since Kaido will be behind the camera, Tetsuru will fill in that role. As the shooting starts, Ikika seems pretty good in her ad-lib, but Tetsuru dramatically changes the direction. Now he's in men in blackout to get Ikika, but he was instantly killed. While Lemon is coming up with subsequent scenarios, Ikika thanks Kaido for trying his best to choose a location that she was looking for and incorporate it into the movie. Tetsuru and Kana observe the interaction between the duo, so Tetsuru asks Kana to go bring drinks to them. Kana then asks him if he knows her true feelings. He knew it a long time ago, realizing that he's helping her. She says she'll support him the next time he has someone he likes. Lemon finishes her script, and this time the heroine will return to her spaceship to escape pursuit and meet up with her comrade, played by Rinan. Then Tetsuru barges in again to change the direction. He's the brother of the slain men in black, out for revenge. Rinan shoots him, dead. Lemon thinks that was amazing. The real romance story gets back on track when Kaido is cast as the main lead. The lines closely follow what happened in real life. The time when Kaido offered Ikika to stay at his place. As they pack up, Kana asks Ikika what kind of ending she would like. A happy one. Back home. Kaido continues to film Ikika because, as instructed by Lemon, he wants to record the heroine adapting to human life. Ikika hypothetically asks what would happen if he found out about the heroine's true identity. His answers seem unenthusiastic, as though he wasn't expecting that to really happen. He doesn't mind and will be fine with it. The next day, the filming is cancelled since it's raining. Kana takes the initiative to pay Kaido a visit and hand him some groceries for lunch. They heard Ikika scream, and actually, it's because she's surprised that her room is leaking. Ikika invites Kana to eat lunch with them. Kaido continues to film, so he thought Kana should help out with the conversation. The girls talk about family, but Kana accidentally asks a question that she thought was rude. How long is she going to stay? As she leaves, she feels guilty for asking that and meets Tetsuru along the way. The duo sits and talks at the bus stop. Kana feels she should not get in between them, so Tetsuru just tells her to confess since Kaido and Ikika haven't done so. She can't because it'll be awkward if it doesn't go well. Plus, they're in the middle of filming. Kana chides him, saying that he doesn't understand because he hasn't fallen in love before. The rain stops, and Kana feels that she'll act normally like she always does, and that's that. That night, Tetsuru tries to sneak into Kaido's room via his balcony window. He says straight to Kaido's face that Kana likes him and Ikika overhears the conversation. Manami is holding up at Tetsuru's place again, not because she had an argument with Satoshi. She's supposed to leave for a trip with her friends, but they all pulled out at the last minute, so as not to make it go to waste. She gives Tetsuru tickets to Okinawa. He calls Kana about it, and she is excited to go. However, she will have to call Neo and Kaido to invite them. Ikika was at first worried about why Kana called so late and that Kaido was so eager to go on the trip. Then she sees magazine photos of the beaches of Okinawa and totally falls in love with them. The trip will also be part of their filming. Lemon starts filming. Their filming attracted many onlookers. Among them were a couple of girls, Kaori Kaneshida and Shiharu Arasawa. Kaori seems to recognize Kaido and gets excited about this unexpected reunion. She's his elementary classmate who sat together with him due to some pairing. Ikika and Kana are not happy. Tetsuru thought things were going to be lively when suddenly Chiharu took a liking for him. And Lemon is filming the priceless expressions of the youth. Back at their lodging, Kaido gets hounded by Kana and Ikika. No matter what he says or explains, it's useless. Lemon has recruited Kaori and Kinoshita as guest crew members for the film. Kaori asks Kaido which one of the girls is his lover, but he denies that they are. That night, Ikika was talking to herself about her own feelings. Lemon may have overheard her, so she advises herself to be honest with herself. The next day, Kaori and Shiharu joined the filming. Ikika couldn't help but notice how close Kaori was clinging to Kaido. 
Chiharu is doing the same to Tetsuru. Suddenly, they realize Kaori and Kaido aren't around, and they fear the worst. Kaori brings Kaido into the forest and admits that she wants to be alone with him. She asks if she is seriously in love with him. Kaido replies that though he said he doesn't have a lover, there is someone he likes very much. And before he could finish that sentence, tears started streaming down Kaori's eyes. Tetsuru got ambushed by Chiharu in his bedroom. She's wrestling with him, admitting she's the aggressive type who lacks self-restraint. She's going to kiss him. Fortunately, Chiharu is being pushed off by Mio, who lands on top of him. Tetsuru and Mio find themselves in an awkward position. Ikika and Kana go in search of Kaido. If Ikika hadn't rustled through the leaves, she would have witnessed Kaori confessing to Kaido. And Lemon laments that nobody came back to continue the filming. Ikika narrates that she may not have understood what they're saying then because she too couldn't understand her own feelings. Ikika couldn't bear watching any longer and ran away. Rather afraid, she was scared to face her own feelings. Mio walks back with Tetsuru, and she hopes he won't tell anyone. So everyone returns and resumes filming. During a scene, Kaori asks if Ikika likes Kaido, and this throws her off her balance. And as they take a break, Chiharu comes chasing Tetsuru once more. Kana thought of seeing Kaido in his room, but Lemon was only there. Without revealing too much, Lemon says she can tell a lot about Kaido just by looking at him. Kana asks about his feelings, so Lemon agrees over a drink. Kana is so drunk that she doesn't realize she's being filmed while spewing out her feelings. Kaido went to see Kaori at her hotel, but she's not in. She has left a message for him via the receptionist. Kaori had gone to meet Ikika, who called her out. She asks Kaori's feelings for Kaido, and her reply is that she likes him. Kaori explains that she was rejected, not by Kaido, but by her senior back in Tokyo, who came here to get it off her mind. She tried to cover up her grief, but it caused others lots of pain. She cried then because Kaido's word was exactly what her senior said. She tells Ikika what Kaido said and could tell he likes Ikika instead. As Kaori leaves, Kaido enters the picture and isn't sure of what's going on. Ikika tells him what happened, and he understands. Ikika adds that this was probably what Kaori wanted to say to him, but she interrupted them then. Chiharu is still chasing Tetsuru. He has been running away from her so much that he is in town. Mio helped him hide, but was soon found out. Chiharu takes him away to resume their date, but Mio pulls Tetsuru's other hand. Then Chiharu teases Mio saying that she likes Tetsuru. However, Chihoru tells her that there is no way Tetsuru would like an exhibitionist like her because she also saw her. A weirdo who gets turned on by letting strangers walk around with no pants. That's when Mio admits she's a nudist. Mio explains how this behavior stems from her parents, and she thought it was normal to do so at home until she found out later it wasn't. She couldn't tell anyone, and since she had low blood pressure, she sometimes forgot to wear them. She tried correcting it, but her forgetfulness got the better of her. She thought of keeping a low profile, but when she made friends with Tetsuru, Kaido, and Kana, she felt fun being with them and couldn't tell them either. Tetsuru reprimands her for being silly, and no matter what, he'll always support her and never hate her. Even Kaido and Kana would do the same. Then Mio confesses that she likes him. Back in the hotel room, Chiharu is one inconsolable girl, she felt like a dumbass for being in the way of Tetsuru and Mio. She came along with Kaori to help her out with her problems, but ended up just like her. Kaido and Ikika walk back and wonder if Tetsuru is having a hard time being chased around. Kaido says he doesn't want to be chased. He wants to chase instead. He makes his first bold move towards Ikika. Their lips were this close to meeting when Kana interrupted them. On the final day, Kaori helps finish up the film before she rushes to the airport. She whispers to Ikika that if she keeps stalling, she'll steal Kaido away. So the gang packs up and continues their remaining time having fun in the sea before they leave for home. Ikika narrates that she finally realized how she felt about Kaido. After Ikika enjoys her first Japanese festival, Rimon pops out of nowhere to challenge everyone to a test of courage at a dark shrine. During the test, Rinon appears to Ikika telling her that an emergency beacon has been activated. True enough, a Federation lifeboat comes to rescue her, but Ikika refuses, saying she still has a lot to do. Then again, when Kaido heard Ikika scream, 
He rushed to where she was, abandoning his partner, Kana, even with the help of Rena, one of Ikika's machines. Kaido dies rescuing the one he loves. Ikika, however, manages to reverse Kaido's death. Kaido awakens and sees himself with Ikika inside a ball of light, mysteriously returning to the same spot. Everyone catches up to the two and sees Ikika incessantly apologizing in front of Kaido. Ikika teleports her friends and the damaged robot to the dam. She comes clean that she's an alien and shows the ship she came to this planet with. Kaido somewhat knew Ikika was along this line, which is why he wasn't that surprised. She also lets them know the robot that attacked her was a rescue pod when her ship accidentally sent out a rescue signal. She destroyed it because she doesn't want to go back yet, as she has yet to fulfill her goal of looking for a certain place. She is unsure if it exists since it's from her memory. Her friends promise not to tell anyone. Tetsuru suggests giving them a tour since it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance. It's late, so everybody parts and assures Ikika to act normal like always. Walking back, the friends feel it's unbelievable that Ikika is an alien. Lemon says she had a hunch from the start since she is an agent for the men in black. Her friends think she's lying. Meanwhile, Ikika apologizes to Kaido for crashing her ship into him. And if she hadn't healed him with her alien technology, he would have died. But he doesn't mind, because if it had never happened, he would never have met her. However, there's something that Ikika hasn't told anyone yet. When the Federation finds out the rescue pod is destroyed, they'll send an investigator to investigate. If that happens, the others may get dragged into the mess. Thus, her time here is limited. Kana sleeps over at Mio's place, and the former is surprised to know about her feelings for Kaido. Kaido dreams that he has to say goodbye to Ikika, who will be returning to her home planet. He swears to come visit her. Only her home is in Andromeda, and it's two three million light years away. The next morning, Ikika decides to go out herself and declines Kaido's offer to help. So when her friends gather at Kaido's home, they learn that she is out and start filming on their own. Kana remembers how she first met Kaido. He was a transfer student from Tokyo who recently lost his parents. Despite that, he put on a cheerful expression, and that is probably what made her notice him and fall in love. Next morning, Ikika continues to go out by herself to search for the place since this is her problem. So when Kaido's friends get here, Kaido has already gone off on his own. They go through Kaido's camera, especially the one with his date with Kana. You can observe her expressions fluctuating between happy and concerned. The latter is when Ikika's mug pops up. Kaido is hanging out alone in town when Lemon sits by him to offer her advice. She thinks he's still a kid because he thought Ikika didn't understand how he felt and declined to let him help out. She asks if he knows Ikika's feelings and what she was thinking or feeling when she came here all by herself. Ikika summoned her courage to reveal her true identity, but has he answered her? So his homework is to think about what he can do for her, because if he really cares, the answer should be simple. He finally knows what to do. Kana sees Kaido taking pictures of scenery. And so one morning she confronts Ikika, who is about to leave the house early again. Knowing she is going to search for that place again, she asks if she's going to leave after finding it. Then she admits that she loves Kaido and will be glad if her rival disappears. She knows she has realized Kaido's feelings and surely must have come to realize her own. Saying that she's an alien or that they can't be together to answer his feelings are just excuses. And to look for that place is the big excuse for her to avoid seeing Kaido. She adds that Ikika can do something about that because all she needs to do is admit she likes Kaido and become a couple. Something right before her that Kana can never attain. She calls Ikika an idiot and runs off. Kana thought Tetsuru loved kicking her when she's down, and supporting her was just a guise to see her in this state. Kana starts crying while admitting her love for Kaido. All Tetsuru can do is just cover her eyes and stand by her side. Nearby, Mio is also crying her heart out. Ikika meets Kaido, who is still taking scenic pictures. She says she had a chance to go back but didn't. And with Kana making her realize that this place isn't the reason she wanted to stay, she wants to confess. However, Kaido won't let her because he wants to do the confessing. So finally, Kaido says it in person, I love you. He has loved her since the time he first met her. They kiss while Lemon is filming this priceless shot from a distance. Kaido is having this wonderful dream of that kiss with Ikika. But he's actually kissing Renan. 
Ikika sits close with Kaido, and she has Kana to thank for making her realize her feelings. Meanwhile, Kana thinks she can't meet the rest as her face is swollen from all that crying. Tetsuru was visiting her, but she needs her own privacy. On his way, he bumps into Mio, who offers to eat her handmade lunch. Mio remembers when she was in Kana's class for the first time, and they became friends. She also met Tetsuru and fell in love at first sight since he remembered her name. Kaido and Ikika are so close together that only Lemon's filming interrupted them. She gives Kaido a present, a condom. She wants them to treasure this miraculous relationship made in heaven. Mio talks to Tetsuru about why he invited Ikika to help with the film despite knowing Kana's feelings. He wanted to help both Kana and Kaido and didn't know which way it'd end up. Mio thinks he should be more honest with his feelings, as he has always had his eyes on Kana. If he keeps avoiding the issue, time won't solve everything. It was through him that she was able to speak up about her feelings. Right now, his feelings are probably in disarray, so Mio understands and leaves. Tetsuru shows his frustrated side for the first time, as he doesn't know what to do. That night, Ekika and Kaido went out for a walk. They teleported to a place so they could watch the starry sky and get close to each other. Ikika right now wants to be with him and others and complete the filming. Manami teases Tetsuru for being silent right after he came home. He didn't want to hear from a future divorcee, but she terms it as just a runaway. Then she leaves for a trip with her friends. Tetsuru gets a call from Kaido to resume filming tomorrow. He can tell he has made up with Ikika and wants to know about Kana then. That's why Kaido is gathering everybody to tell them all about his feelings. Tetsuru got upset and hung up. Tetsuru calls Kana to meet at the lookout point, a place they used to spend a lot of time together when they were young. Kana thought he was just wasting her time when he finally summoned the courage to reveal the truth. Though he wanted everything to work out between her and Kaido, he really didn't want that to happen. If Kaido and Ikika got together, maybe she would become free. But that didn't happen. He ended up toying with the girl he loves and making her suffer. Kana flusters upon knowing Tetsuru's feelings, and even though it's bad timing, at least he managed to say it. He knows that even if Kaido loves Ikika, her feelings for Kaido won't change. That's why he likes her. So once Kana rushes off, it's Mio's turn to give the crestfallen Tetsuru a hug from the back. She allows him to cry and thanks him because she was able to change to become stronger. Kana runs all the way to Kaido's house just to tell him that she loves him. Though Kaido apologizes because he loves Ikika, Kana isn't worried and thanks him for listening instead. The friends resume their filming, and Rinon wakes up from his peaceful slumber, suddenly feeling frantic. When Kaido and Ikika return home, Ikika's sister, Emika, suddenly pops up before them and hugs her in her relief that she's still alive. Emika is retrieving Ikika because the latter is on a planet where contact with its life forms is forbidden under their Federation laws, and the only solution is for her to leave this planet before things get messier. Ikika reluctantly agrees, but changes her mind when Kana and the others arrive to stop her. Learning certain information from Emika, Lemon tells them that Ikika may stay if the earthly spot she has seen in her imagination is found in order to prove a probable previous contact between aliens and human beings. As the group finds the place, the search team arrives and starts a pursuit. Since Rinon's teleport function becomes disabled, Lemon takes the others to the spot using a van specially prepared with Emika's help. With Tetsuro, Mio, and Kana becoming biosignature decoys for the pursuing rescue craft. However, a few kilometers from the site, the van collides with a cloaked drone from the rescue craft and overturns. They're still alive because Rinon became a large airbag to cushion the impact. Lemon tells the duo to make haste because she's confident she can handle this robot. Lemon Van transforms into a Transformer-worthy robot. Kana runs into Manami halfway and gets in her car. Another robot intercepts Kaido and Ikika, but Emika's little ship helps buy them some time. Rinom pilots it to let them escape. That's all Emika can do for them since her ship is surrounded by the robots as they are surrounding the planet. Kaido and Ikika sit on the train to their destination. Ikika feels sorry for getting everyone involved, but Kaido feels she doesn't need to. He wonders if he can visit her planet someday and meet her parents. He wished he could introduce her to him too. Though he has gotten over their deaths, he wishes he had made more memories with them. That's why he records everything and his friends with his camera, so he won't regret it later. 
Ekika is glad she came to this planet. She had fun and even fell in love. For the umpteenth time, they reiterate their feelings for each other again and promise to love each other always. Meanwhile, Lemon's van has its limits, but thankfully, her backup arrives. Tetsuru's scooter runs out of gas. A rain of missiles destroys the robot as Tetsuru hears a familiar voice, Satoshi Manami's husband. He's working for the men in black too. Kana and Manami also get reinforcements from the men in black. Kaido and Ikika have reached the lake, the exact location in Ikika's memories. Suddenly, an alien probe appears from the middle of the lake, and the large flash has Ikika viewing her memories of this place. She is surprised Kaido is in it too when she realizes she gave some of her cells to him. They see an alien riding on a tree as proof of its existence, but when they return to reality, the tree has already rotted, and the robots surround them. Kaido is pinned down, while Ikika is dragged away. She doesn't want him to be hurt anymore and feels guilty that her selfishness has hurt everyone. However, Kaido disagrees that nobody feels that way, and in fact, this is his own selfishness. He doesn't want her to go. Ikika resigns to her fate of being taken away and says those feelings that have grown inside will last forever. Kaido vows to find her, and she promises she'll wait. Emika and Ikika hear the voice of what could probably be their ancestor. She thanks them for finding this and explains that she didn't come to this planet on purpose, but had to make an emergency landing and was saved by a man. He became dear to her, but since interaction with the inhabitants of this planet is forbidden, something was coming to retrieve her. Even though the memories of this planet's inhabitants will be wiped out, she wanted to preserve the memories with him. Even if she loses them or can't remember them, at least her memories will live on in them. A few months passed, and Kaido and his buddies attended school like normal. Tetsuru gets a love letter from another girl, and he's not too eager about it. Kana teases him to properly answer and, at least, get a girlfriend. She suggests Mio, who doesn't mind that suggestion. Nanami just came back from Bolivia and has bought lots of weird souvenirs. One that includes dolls that grant wishes. She asks about Ikika, so Kaido says her term abroad has ended. The friends are surprised to learn that Lemon is transferring away due to family circumstances. She gives Kaido the film role as a parting gift. She notes that it is incomplete and that he will be the one who creates the grand finale. The friends gather to watch the film, and it's a crazy montage of all they have filmed, enough to bring tears to the eyes and nostalgic memories. As Kaido narrates his belief in people living on as memories when they die and the fading of those memories, the reason for wanting to leave something behind is his motivation for wanting to keep the film rolling. A few years down the road, when the school has their usual cultural festival, the movie research club is screening the film that they did last year. The film called Ano Natsu de Mataru was left behind by their graduated seniors, and they totally love it because it has mecha, aliens, SFX galore, and the heroine is quite pretty. But the final part of the film is a shot of Ikika and Renan on her shoulder, 